What's up guys, PJ here from 3D Printing Canada. Today in front of me I have the Ender 3 S1 Pro. You're probably wondering why. Don't they have an S1? Well, let's find out. All right guys, now that we've got all the contents laid out on the table, which to be honest isn't very much compared to, you know, the original enders and what you have to use to do to build them, which it still wasn't a lot, but um, first thing we'll do is we'll uh, have Jaren zoom in on the head here. And uh, you guys can take a look. There's screws here on the side of the head. One, two, three. We're gonna actually have to mount the head to this plate. And we'll pop open the bag of, these are M3 by six. And we'll find the wrench accordingly they give you here. Okay. Now we'll turn in, we're gonna get, just slips on right here. Sorry, actually it looks like it's four holes we'll be securing to. Looks like they've tapped into the side of the motor here a little bit. Yep, so it'll be four screws. And we'll go ahead and snug them all down. So now that we have the head installed, they leave you one spare screw. Go ahead and take a look and see if our head is loose at all. So, no, seems good. Yeah. All right, now the next step, again, pretty simple. There is absolutely not much to this build at all. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put the gantry on top of the base of the printer with the M, I believe these are five by 45. And then we'll be putting the little wire and cable clamp in next, so just go ahead and take that printer, drop it on top carefully. This is the way I like to do this, guys. I just like to hang the printer off the side a bit. Make sure you're sitting in front of it because you really don't want to drop your printer on the floor. We'll go ahead and Get these screws started here. All right, guys, next thing you're gonna do is take this cable clip, okay? So we got this here, pretty little thing. We'll go ahead and pop her right on there, on the Z-axis. Then we're gonna go ahead, pull off all the little tape you have sitting around your printer here. Go ahead and get rid of that. And seeing how, you know, in the spirit of things, we throw it to Jaren, and, uh, I miss. So go ahead and plug in this Z motor. Never do this while your machine is on. Never unplug or plug in a motor while your machine is on. You don't want reverse current getting back to the board. Could cause damage. So next we'll go ahead, we got the Y here, or excuse me, the X, and then the X end stop, which we will have to install, that's right. No, it's installed. The plug is underneath, so we'll go ahead and show you guys here. It's right underneath here. Might actually have to tip it up a little to look at it. And plug that in. All right. And that's for your screen, which we'll install next. Go ahead and plug the Z to the Z port, as you can see. 
And this one here. And the two that were taped up here, now plug in here and here. One's for filament detection, and I believe the other one's for the LED. Okay, have that plugged in. Now, I'm gonna show you guys something super important. Um, I don't know if I wanna. So I think I'm just gonna cut the window out. So hopefully Jaren can get in here nice and you can see what's going on. I'll tip the printer up in a second, but for now, let's... Yeah, because that's in there. I'm not gonna peel off the, the sticker. I'm just gonna cut it out here. Carefully. And, and what you wanna do here, this is super important. Now, it comes from the factory at 2.30 for all the European countries so you don't blow up your printer. Um, but here, if you were to do it, it just won't work. It won't turn on or it will start to print and as soon as your part cooling fan comes on, the printer will shut down. Everybody makes this mistake, if, especially when you're a beginner. So just don't forget, here in Canada, um, we're on 110, so we'll flip that switch over. Now your printer will work. Right. Next step is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna install the screen. Go ahead and get the screen. I'll drop all three of the screws in now. So one, two, and three. I'll plug the screen in. You can do that in however, whatever order you want. It's just that easy. And then just go ahead and screw these in. I'm actually gonna print the, put the tip printer on its side here to do this, It'll be much easier. Now uh, the last part, which is extremely easy. Go ahead and get all this stuff out of the way now. We got some leftover parts at the end, your tools. Now this comes in handy here for if your, your Z wheels see a little loose there. We'll, uh, slowly bring this down. Take a look, they're spinning freely. We'll take that eccentric nut, tighten it up so they just grab a little. There we go. Other side's loose too, so we'll tighten that eccentric nut down as well. Now we'll get Jaren to zoom in on this shot right here, so you can see exactly where the eccentric nut is. It's just on the other side of the wheel here. Okay, so you can use those to make sure your gantry's not too loose, because what an eccentric nut has a bevel in it, and that bevel will go so far and then it'll be completely loose. So you just wanna be able to spin them by hand, but not have them just spinning super freely. But you wanna have some, some give there, all right? That's, there's a happy medium. Same with your belts, you know? You don't want too tight, you don't want too loose. So we're gonna tighten this belt a bit. So you get that, that nice note, almost like you're strumming a bass. All right, and the next step is simple here. We just pop that, so just forward. So just this piece forward and then down, snaps in place. Go ahead and take your filament sensor, plug it in and then that will go forward like that. And the final thing we're going to do is run this cable. So you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and slip it down inside here. Right there, they actually show you it going, so that's probably extra added protection so it doesn't get damaged. 
And then you just go ahead and make sure you're facing the right way. Pop open the connectors, the clips, excuse me, plug them in. And then I'm thinking this just pops actually. So I made a mistake guys. We'll go ahead and get this in here first. It's that little black, like a rubberized clip to stop you from damaging your, your plug, I can only assume. Go ahead and slip that in place. Get those plugged in, nice. All right, and there you have it. It uh, looks just like an S1 to me, uh, but it's a pro, so it's got an all metal heat break. Um, you can print all kinds of materials with it. You're not just stuck to, you know, printing at around 240 degrees. Okay, so now that we've got the printer all built and ready to go, you can uh, go ahead and try one of the test models on the card or, you know, if you're already an advanced printer, um, nothing needs to be explained there. So we'll go ahead and we'll go into ready here. And you can home the printer. I'm a home Z. Make sure everything's working. And it looks like everything's homing okay. You can also go into move access. Oh, we we'll still have to wait for it to home. It was at the top of the printer. Okay, now that we can tell that the uh, printer is working and functioning properly and is homing properly, if you ever wanted to move an access, you can go in here, move access. You can move things like uh, your filament in and out. Um, we can manually go in and, you know, change, hit, hit your nozzle temp, your bed temp, so you don't have to do the preheat feature. You can turn your fan on, you can cool everything down. So pretty basic features, um, nothing, uh, nothing fancy or anything like that, like a big tree uh, screen would be. Uh, and then you've got your advanced settings here. So movement looks like we have a transmission ratio still. Looks like their uh, E steps are 142.9. That's very strange. It's different um, being with the point instead of just 124. Um, but yeah, that's interesting. Uh, you might set that yourself and find the best E steps for you. Uh, so you can do all that. You've even got your accelerations in here so you can play around with that. That's nice. That's actually a nice feature. I like that. Um, turn your speed up and down. So it definitely has a, a few new features that the old ones don't, and it has a touch screen um, that the old printers don't have, like the V2, things like that. Um, what do we got under device here? We've got uh, PLA settings. So it looks like you can set those for your preheat to what you would like, and then just hit the check mark and it'll save. Um, same with ABS, say you had a higher temp ABS or something, you want to print at 260. Or maybe you're like me, you only use 70 for a bed temp with ABS. Um, you might want to change that. So that's pretty cool. You can do that. Obviously, we can change our languages here. Um, about the printer, it's going to tell you the model number, S1 Pro, uh, the firmware version on it, the screen that's on it, uh, things like that. So the printer bed size, that's pretty cool. That shows that. Oh, it gives you their website there as well. So not uh, nothing too crazy that you can't scroll through and figure out. So I, I like that. Very simple. Um, I guess maybe this is for stopping and playing the print. I'm not sure. This is my uh, first time using one of these, to be honest with you guys. We've had them in the store for a little bit, but I haven't got to play with one yet because I haven't had to have one in for repair. So that is a really good sign. Um, okay guys, and we're back. So I went ahead and I took this Ender S1 Pro and did this little, I think it's a Boba Fett or a Mandalorian bust. Um, yeah, and uh, it turned out really well. Um, just as expected, most of Creality's printers right out of the box print amazing. I never have a problem with them. I, I'm really liking uh, the fact it's got a touchscreen. That's a really cool add-on feature. And the all-metal heat break so you can print different materials. So I hope you guys liked this build video. And uh, if you did, don't forget to give us a like, share, subscribe, tell your friends about us. And again, if you want to see anything else in our videos, leave it in the comments and uh, we'll run it by the team and maybe get some of those videos out there. We'll see you in the next video.